welcome back to the channel it's Belle and today I'm going to do my November wrap up. Uh, November was quite a good month for me actually I, I didn't realize how many books I'd actually read so apparently I read nine books apparently like I said. I've read quite a lot of good books this month so this month I won't lie some not so good books like two of them I was quite disappointed with I just don't know what happened with that the stories just weren't for me the first book i read in november was king of greed by anna huang this is the third book in the sin series or king of sin something like that um and i really enjoyed book one and book two which is king of wrath and king of pride i even did a reading vlog for king of pride i read that within a couple of hours because i was just loving it and i was really excited for king of greed i just thought it was going to be the best especially the glimpses that we got of the characters so we got a little bit of Ale and Dom from book two and so I thought that when I read book three I'm really going to be into it but um, unfortunately the story just fell really flat for me. I was honestly so bored. We were told and we were led to believe this was going to be the groveling book which is what I expected and honestly what groveling? Hardly any groveling. The relationship just was toxic to me like I don't understand how it even happened or where it went and the main characters were quite it was quite a weird read because i don't know how the female main character what was her name alessandra or something something like that she had more personality in the glimpses we got of her in book two than she did in her own book which to me yeah that's not the best and the guy he just wasn't giving he wasn't giving what an huang's male main characters give um so i eventually gave this a three stars it probably is more of a two stars for me i just i don't know maybe this trope is just not what i like anymore or maybe these types of romance books is just not doing it for me i feel like my tastes have changed within the romance section and a lot and now i feel like with anna huang especially her characters are quite recycled a lot of the same thing in a different format and unfortunately it just isn't working for me anymore then i read the truth about the harry Cuber affair now i mentioned this in one of my previous videos i think in my book haul video that i really wanted to read this after i had watched the tv show the tv show in my opinion was excellent and i just wanted to see what the book was like I really enjoyed this guys this was so interesting to me basically we follow a man called Marcus Goldberg who is a renowned best-selling author in America and unfortunately after his debut and his best-selling novel he has hit a bit of a writer's block he goes to get some inspiration from his mentor Harry Cuber who is also a best-selling author unfortunately Harry Cuber is arrested because a body has been found on his home in his yard and it's the body of a 15 year old missing Nola Kelligan. Marcus decides that he wants to clear Harry's name and also find out the truth about the girl buried in his yard. Did Harry do this? What was the relationship between the two characters? Was there a relationship? What was going on there? And this entire book for me personally was just a big thrill and I really enjoyed the mystery of it and the way that Marcus goes about solving it. Quite a big plot twist at the end of the book and at the end of the TV show which I thought was done so well. I did not see it coming. I just think this was a very well written book. It's such a rich and complex storyline. The way that it's set out it also gives you some advice that Harry Kubeck gives Marcus Goldman as a writer like reading this it's not just a detective story and although it is a thick big book please don't be scared it was honestly I read it in a couple of days it was so engaging like, there's never a dull moment every page is something new and something that you never would have known I just loved the mystery of trying to figure out all the pieces and putting the story together finding out exactly what happened with Nola oh my god Nola's character was she's probably my favorite in this book yeah I gave this a four stars i highly recommend it please read the summary if you're interested i will link it down below also patrick dempsey plays harry cuber in the tv show and yep yeah. then i read a very fun romance book called one last stop by anise star honestly the cover is what drew me in and i am so glad it did because i loved this book i gave this a 4.5 stars i believe i don't think it was a five stars but i just wasn't expecting anything and it totally blew me away 
So I will just read you the summary. When designer Amber White gets the opportunity to project manage a lucrative contract with the August Room, an exclusive and glamorous private members club she can't wait to get started, that is until she meets handsome managing director Finn Hawthorne. Finn has no respect for her hard work, continuously undermines her and worst of all has the uncanny ability to charm everyone he meets, everyone except her. Launching the August Room in the UK is Finn Hawthorne's baby and he needs it to go well. When nepotism whispers follow it, following him everywhere, he needs this to prove that he deserves his most recent promotion. That's why his designer Amber gets under his skin so much. It's charging him a small fortune, won't listen to any of his ideas and worst of all, she's dropped at gorgeous and seemingly immune to his charms. Forced to work together in close proximity to meet the tight launch deadline, sparks begin to fly and the fine line between business and pleasure starts to blur. That summary was enough to hook me in, but the book itself is honestly so much more than that. I thought we were going to have another overbearing, typical alpha man whole male character, but he is nothing like that. He's honestly one of the only male characters I've read in romance books that has a vulnerability about him. He's complex, he has anxiety, you know, he suffers from a lot of the things that normal people do. And I feel like having that representation in someone like him was so well done. And Amber, this is my girl. This is my girl. She works so hard and honestly has such a bright future ahead of her if it wasn't for her irritating boss. Constantly taking the credit for everything that she does and her designs like she doesn't deserve this and she goes through a lot of things too that a lot of us can relate to i'm in my mid-20s now like what the hell and i relate to a lot of the things that they both go through which is why i think i enjoyed this book so much but it's honestly just more than a romance to me it, it just really resonated within me and the romance itself i think this pairing is excellent they have such good chemistry their romance felt so natural like it was just gradual there was no crazy fast paceness going on and it's not the longest book like how many pages i mean it's just over 320 pages like just 320 pages but i think it was just done so well i highly recommend one last stop by Anissa Star. then i read grievous blood by alexander darwin now this is book two in the what is this called this is book two in the Combat Codes series, book one being the Combat Codes. I really enjoyed book two. I thought this was an excellent sequel. I know a lot of books suffer from having that dull sequel where it's just not really as good as the first one, but I did enjoy this. Do I think it was better than the first one? I don't think so. I really enjoyed book one. Like I gave book one five stars. That was perfect to me. Book two was more of a 4.5. However, I thought it was an excellent sequel. Like the praise for this, this book kicks ass literary, literally and literarily which is so true a deliciously brutal back alley brawl of a novel a must read like yes 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 of course i just love the concept of this book i think it's something different it's something new and the martial arts the fight scenes are all real so are all written so well because i'm pretty sure alexander darwin is a martial artist himself so a lot of that goes into the books that he writes but yeah i'm so excited for book three who knows when that's coming out this I believe it's already out now. The author was kind enough to send me a very rare heat bound edition of book two, but this is the final paperback as well. I'm part of the blog tour for it on the 14th of December, but highly recommend the combat codes. Like this series is great. Right, then I read Days at the Moriyasaki Bookshop by Satoshi Yagisawa. And this I bought on a limb. I think I saw someone talking about this on TikTok and it was so cheap to buy. Like I bought it for like six quid. So I bought it. Very, very short book with me. I actually took this with me on a weekend trip to Gibraltar for my best friend's 26th birthday. I read it on the plane. I read it at the airport. I read it at the hotel on the way back and I finished it. And it was just a perfect little read to take with me. And I felt like the environment that I read it in really just made me appreciate the story itself. Um, this book is is just beautiful. Hidden in Jimbochu, Tokyo is a book lover's paradise. On a quiet corner in an old wooden building lies a shop filled with hundreds of second-hand books. 25 year, 25 year old Takako has never liked reading, although the Moriyasaki bookshop has been in her family for three generations. It is the pride and joy of her uncle Satoru, who has devoted his life to the bookshop since his wife Momoko left him five years earlier. When Takako's boyfriend reveals his marrying someone else, the, she reluctantly accepts her eccentric uncle's offer to live rent free in the tiny room above the shop. Hoping to nurse her broken heart in peace, Takako is surprised to encounter new worlds within the stacks of the books lining the Moriyasaki bookshop. 
As summer fades to autumn, Satoru and Tatako discover they have more in common than they thought. The Moriyasaki Bookshop has something to teach them both about life, love and the healing power of books. I think this little book healed something within me. There are so many gorgeous quotes in this. Oh my god, especially when the uncle is talking to his niece, niece which I appreciate that type of relationship because I'm an auntie myself. I have now 10. I have eight nieces and two nephews my sister gave birth very recently alhamdulillah but like some of these quotes listen to this your life is yours it doesn't belong to anyone else i wanted to know what it would mean to live life on my own terms but i don't know maybe it takes a long time to figure out what you're truly searching for maybe you spend your whole life just trying to figure out a small part of it yeah i do recommend this little cute book i think i gave it four stars i know that some people would truly appreciate the messages in this book and just the book of itself like the healing power of books imagine working in a bookshop just being surrounded by books all the time like then i read one of my absolute favorite romance books that i read last year i believe um i just reread it i wanted to be back in this world again so this is notes on love by naz spencer who is a bengali author if i'm correct and i seriously love this book like it's so beautiful we follow both seth who is our male lead and then kieran who is our female lead kieran is a single mom of two boys and seth is someone who has recently just been divorced he's now grumpy he's nursing a heartbreak his dad's on his case about the company and in comes kieran this beautiful eccentric woman who loves color and all things bright and she just uplifts everything in the room Six months away, nursing heartbreak, and my father plucks a ray of sunshine from the sky and puts her in the office opposite mine. Kieran Joffrey is a one thing I hate. Happy. She's an explosion of colour in one gorgeous package and I should stay away. But Kieran's warmth is all I've ever craved and avoiding her isn't an option. The more I learn about her, the more complicated it gets. I'll figure out a way to prove this is worth it. Kieran. Moving to London is a fresh start new office, a new personal assistant, and a stunning boss who is missing a heart in his chest. Seth Sinclair is the office grump and fate seems to throw us together. No matter how hard I try, I can't stay away. It's something I want when I definitely shouldn't. It's too complicated and I can't trust myself not to mess up. But Seth's reminding me of one thing I thought I lost, hope. Is it really possible for me to have it all? Kieran is an absolute sweetheart. I love her so much. She has the biggest heart in the world. She's always thinking about others and always just putting herself down to accommodate others, which I hate and I understand too. Seth is lost. He doesn't know what he wants. He hates her. He loves her. Does he want her? Does he crave her? He doesn't know. They are forced to work together and within time, you know, they both accommodate each other, they understand each other, he starts to see her for who she really is. And like the title notes on love is so cute because Kieran has this thing where she puts, she writes things down on sticky notes and sticks them absolutely everywhere. And the ending of this book is just so cute. I am so excited for more books by this author. I think at the moment we have notes on love and then we have book two, God, what is it called? Um, sorry I can't remember but this series follows the series follows the seven sins so you have the seven brothers and they each have like a sin so Seth is wrath I did love this book I do recommend it coming towards my last few books um the third to last right um book that i read is taste like shaka by nisha sharma now this is book two to the shakespeare war auntie series i think book one was dating dr dill which literally went viral viral on tiktok at the time that it was published and that's why i picked it up if i'm being honest and i loved that book dating dr dill was excellent i pretty sure I gave her a four stars or a five stars. I obviously had a lot of hope going into book two and this follows Bobby. Yeah, Bobby. And follows her interest, Benjamin. Basically, she's a wedding planner. He's this big chef. He's got his own chain of restaurants and yeah. Um, I didn't really enjoy this. I just think that maybe the story, the plot wasn't for me, especially with their jobs. I was like, I don't care about wedding planning. But the first half of the book was okay. And then you get to the second half and it was just really draggy and boring. And it felt like there was no plot. I think as individuals, the characters had a lot going on. And as a pairing, they had a lot of insane chemistry and tension. I think they do make sense. 
but then once they get together like it just kind of felt a bit boring and a bit flat however the representation the descriptions of the food the culture to the environment that all was excellent i really enjoyed that but yeah it did fall a little bit flat for me which i'm disappointed by um I'm not too sure if I will pick up book three but I guess we'll see because I do like Nisha Sharma's writing but yeah having this felt flat is just a little bit disappointing to me I did give this a three stars and I read what was probably my favorite read of November One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig guys this was amazing what the hell like i cannot believe i haven't read this before speth spindle needs more than luck to stay safe in the eerie mislocked kingdom of blunder she needs a monster she calls him the nightmare an ancient mercurial spirit trapped in her head he protects her he keeps her secrets but nothing comes for free especially with magic when Elspeth meets a mysterious highwayman on the forest road, she is thrust into a world of shadow and deception. Together they embark on a dangerous quest to cure the town of London from the dark magic infecting it. As the stakes heighten and their undeniability undeniable undeniable attraction intensifies, Elspeth is forced to face her darkest secret, yet the nightmare is slowly, darkly taking over her mind. She might not be able to stop him. A maiden must unleash the monster within to save her kingdom in this dark, lush, gothic fantasy debut. This is this was a debut? My god, this is probably one of the best debuts that I've ever read. The writing was fantastical. The plot itself, the whole magic system was so interesting, like the Providence cards and stuff. If you've read if you've read this, then you know exactly what I mean. And the character Elspeth herself, the this poor poor girl, like she cannot catch a break. But the ending, guys, the ending. I do have book two, thank God, it's over there. What's it called? Two Twisted Crowns. I will be starting that as soon as possible. I did finish this towards the end of November, so I don't know why I haven't picked it up yet. But I, guys, this was just so good. Honestly, transport you. There is not a single dull page in this entire book. And the characters are so interesting, especially Elspeth. And then the main guy, I won't say his name just because, you know, spoilers. And he's not in the summary so maybe that is a spoiler the ending oh my god the ending has my mind literally blown i did not think that was, i had an idea that possibly this could happen but surely not and then it did and i was like what five stars guys everybody needs to read this put it on your friggin tbrs read it right now if it's been sitting on your shelf pick it up and read it right now and you will know exactly what i mean i have yet to meet anyone who didn't like this book especially when i put it on my instagram so yep right and then the last book i read to end off this video was make you wish i was dead by macy t Rioza. this is a very short spooky halloween themed novella i would read the summary but it's just way too long but basically we follow a female main character who has a bit of obsession with blood gore all things bad and i loved it this was so interesting this is explicit guys this is for adults only please don't read this if you're underage and um, there is a lot of smart it's explicit like i said but the main girl has stolen my heart i love macy t Rioza. her book red roses and black dahlias was one of my favorites of this year this little novella is what well, it was really good honestly i enjoyed it i gave it a four stars i recommend it to those who want to get their teeth into something lush something dark something gory who are not freaked out by that who want to read about a girl who isn't afraid to go for what she wants um i'm glad i've ended the month on something quite juicy but yeah guys those are all the books that i read in november like i said i had a good reading month i i honestly didn't realize i'd read so much and quite a lot of romance too one two three three four romances wow interesting because i'm not really a romance reader but i do have very specific tastes when it comes to what i read in the romance sections my favorite is obviously i loved one dark window i really enjoyed days at the morisaki bookshop and then obviously one last stop and then the harry cubet affair all in all very very happy with all things i've read if you've read any of these books let me know how many books you've read this month i say this month i obviously mean november i'm already in december now i haven't finished any books it's like the 8th of december or something but thank you so much guys if you watched this i hope it wasn't too long i hope it didn't bore you don't forget to like comment and subscribe and let me know what you thought hey guys i hope you all have an amazing december and finish the year off really well i'm also excited for the christmas break because i need a break but yeah thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one mm -hmm.